Hi, I'm Steve Mignanti and I'm here in El Paso, Texas, where we're going to take a look at the new MSD Atomic Electronic Fuel Injection System. It's basically a wet flow throttle body that replaces most any square bore carburetor. Now, if you're one of those guys with a muscle car, a hot rod, or a street rod, who doesn't think you can step up to fuel injection because it's too complex or too expensive, this is going to change all of that. The beauty of this is that it bolts down in the place of any square bore four barrel carburetor, use your existing manifold, and it gives you the complete benefits of electronic fuel injection, which includes better drivability, faster startups, cleaner idling, and potentially more horsepower. This system has eight wires that connect it to your car, and you can use your pre-existing fuel line in most applications. Let's have a closer look at these parts. The heart of the unit is the four barrel throttle body. Nice thing about that is that the ECU is integrally assembled onto the side of it. Uh, it's not remote located, it's all right here in a very compact and tidy assembly. Inside of this, of course, we have the MAP sensor, the throttle position sensor, and the air inlet temperature sensor. So those are things that come pre-assembled, you don't have to tune them, you don't even have to look at them. The fuel rails are integral, so there's no chance for leaks, and this is something you just bolt down in place of any pre-existing square flange carburetor. And any OE style muscle car air cleaner will drop right down over this. There's no interference problems and that's a nice detail. You can keep your factory air cleaner if you choose to. While many of these aftermarket systems require the use of a laptop computer and some skills, not so with the Atomic EFI. This is the power module and this plugs into the unit and basically provides the ability through this handheld controller to set the system up for engine size, camshaft type, compression, cylinder count. All those things are done right here with the handheld controller. The unit does all the adjusting for you once you enter the basic information. And unlike a lot of fuel injection systems that require a return line and some pretty complex plumbing underneath the car, the Atomic comes with high pressure fuel line and a special PWM fuel pump. You might wonder what does that mean? Well that means pulse width modulated. The pump functions like a strobe light. Basically, instead of having full flow all the time and requiring a circuit to return the fuel back to the tank, this is only triggered to pump fuel when the computer tells it to do so. So as a result, you don't have to have a return line. It makes life so easy. Either items that come standard in every kit are a pre and post fuel filter. These are essential to make sure that the gasoline is as clean as can be when it gets to the injectors. And a wide band O2 sensor, which reads rich or lean conditions and corrects them immediately for the best drivability. Now that we're familiar with the MSD Atomic EFI system, let's install it on a car. This is a 64 Chevelle with a 300 horsepower 350. Let's get started. We're going to start our work under the car. Now since we have access to this two post lift, we're going to use it. But if you're at home using a floor jack and jack stands and a creeper, you can do this job. Just make sure you support the car evenly, chalk the wheels, and work safely. The only part of the entire installation that requires welding is installing the O2 sensor. It'll go into either header or exhaust head pipe, and what you gotta do is find a place that's nice and flat, about six to eight inches away from where the tubes merge. We can see it right here. Uh, some headers have this already installed, but in case they don't, the kit comes with a bung that you can weld in. Some important things to keep in mind about this is you never wanna install the O2 sensor in an exhaust system that has any kind of a leak upstream. It'll send false readings of fuel-air mixture. So again, no header leaks upstream of the O2 sensor. And also, if you're gonna mount this to a, a curve, make sure that you're on the inside of the curve, never on the outside because again you get a leaner mixture and inaccurate readings on the outside of any kind of a curved exhaust pipe and most of all make sure you install it so that it's not going to hang too low or interfere with other parts of the car. Mounting the fuel pump is pretty straightforward but does require a little bit of planning. In our case we're going to be using the stock in-tank pickup unit. Keep in mind we have 300 horsepower so the 516 diameter is fine. If you have a lot of power like 500 or more you might want to think about resizing the pickup to 3 8 or larger to make sure you have adequate supply. Speaking of fuel supply, every atomic pump does come with 3 8 inlet and outlet fittings and it's nice. There's a barb fitting, rubber hose goes right on, no need for metric fasteners or any kind of weird fittings you're going to find. It's all right here. Now the pump itself can be mounted either in the tank or externally. Keep in mind the pumps are all marked with a flow direction arrow. You want to be sure to mount it so that the flow is pointing toward the front of the car because pumps are designed to push fuel not to pull it from the tank. So keep in mind for mounting keep it down low so it's self priming. The gravity will route the fuel into the inlet, and from there it goes forward to the front of the car. When it comes to running the fuel lines, there are a couple of different choices. The MST Atomic is capable of being run with a return style or a returnless system. Now, in a returnless mode, it's ideal to put the pump into the tank. Okay, let's run some fuel lines. 
In any fuel system, clean fuel is essential. In this situation, we'll be running a pre-filter and a post-filter. The pre-filter, of course, operates at about 6 PSI. Make sure the fuel coming from the tank into the pump is clean. Keep in mind, they're both unidirectional. Make sure you've got them going in the right direction for proper operation. But before we crank down on our hose clamps, I want to show you something. Your car may be equipped with hose clamps that look like this or like this don't use them. That's because they're meant for carbureted fuel systems which run maybe 6 or 7 psi. The EFI on this car will go 30 to 70 psi, so we want to be sure to use the clamps that are included in the kit. And these are EFI specific hose clamps that do a much better job of clamping the hose to the fitting. Again, make sure you use these on your system. With the fuel pump and pre-filter in place, now we can run the rubber fuel line. Now the MSD Atomic Master Kit comes with plenty of high quality woven fuel line to handle pretty much any automobile installation. We're going to run it along with the factory steel line, nice safe place, avoiding pinch points and sources of heat. As for the secondary filter, we found a spot right here in the frame rail. We drilled a quarter inch hole and we're going to mount this right here. It's nice and safe. Inside the frame rail, doesn't hang too low, it'll work out just fine. Well, with the fuel system in place, the simplicity continues. The fuel pump at the back of the car takes a single wire from the front to the back. This orange guy, we've routed along with the fuel line away from heat sources and pinch points. And of course, at the pump, there's also a ground wire that goes to the body of the car. The power module is the controller for the high draw items like the electric fuel pump, the cooling fans, and the O2 sensor. Now, this can be mounted anywhere on the car. If you've got a restored muscle car and you want to hide your EFI system, you can. This can go all the way inside of the car, like in the glove compartment, with extensions that are available from MSD. It does not cause any kind of radio frequency, so it won't interrupt your radio. But in our case, we're going to go under the hood. Now, here you have a couple of options. The inner fender is a classic place to put this, but in our case, we're going to mount it to the firewall. Fixing the unit to the firewall is as simple as using self-tapping screws. Okay, now that the power module is fastened to the firewall, we can think about the wiring harness. Now the kit comes with a, a wiring harness with a very long series of pigtails on it. And what these do is they run things like the electric fuel pump, the cooling fans, and the O2 sensor. It starts by plugging it in. Next up, we're going to be running these wires in such a way that they don't make contact with any hot spots or moving parts. Well, the stage is set and our Chevelle is almost ready to jump into the 21st century. Yes, the carburetor is coming off and the fuel injector is going on. But let's have a quick look at the MSD Atomic EFI throttle body. The thing that's beautiful about this is it's modular design. It's very, very sanitary to look at. There's not a lot of external components like the MAP sensor, the TPS sensor. They're all built in, as are the fuel injectors, which are feeding each of the Venturi from the corners. Again, it's self-contained, sanitary, and really easy to look at. Beyond that, it requires less wiring, has a single fuel line, it has a crossover fuel rail, roller bearings for the, for the throttle blade shafts, and an integrated fuel pressure sensor. Well, now it's time to take that carburetor off. The MSD throttle cable bracket is universal. It'll accept all four GM and Chrysler kickdowns, throttle cables, and throttle rods. But what we want to do is the parts that were on our carburetor that we worked with before, we're transferring onto the throttle body so that they work once again here. Again, very simple, swap the parts from the carburetor onto the fuel injection unit and you'll be good to go. Like all EFI systems, we have to have information for the computer on engine temperature. And the best place to get that is the engine coolant temperature. So we have a sending unit that we're threading into the cylinder head right here. We're going to wire it up and we want to make sure that the wire doesn't get into contact with anything hot that could melt it. With the throttle body bolted to the engine, now we can attach the wires to the system. Those connections include battery positive, battery negative, switch 12 volt, and also a trigger from the distributor to the fuel injection unit to tell the injectors when to run. That's a simple wire on our MSD ready to run distributor. Under the car, we have to connect the electric fuel pump, the O2 sensor, and that totals eight wires. But remember, there are some optional connections, which include the ability to run two cooling fans. And finally, if we choose to, we can also trigger a kick up for the AC in the event that the AC turns on, we can actually compensate the idle speed for that. So basically it's an AC kick up sensor. So again, eight wires to get her running, it couldn't be simpler. Connecting the gas tank to the fuel injection unit is really easy. Now the MSD throttle body does come with an AN fitting, it's a dash six, but in our case, because we're going to use the rubber, we're going to use the included barbed fitting. We're just going to plug a rubber line right onto that. We want to be sure we use an EFI specific clamp on this. 
With the Atomic EFI installed on our Chevelle, we can now rejoice in the fact we don't have to use a laptop, but we do have to introduce the unit to the engine. That's done with the handheld programmer. We do that by plugging the wire into the power module, which connects to the handheld controller, turning the key into the on position. A screen will come up here for the initial setup. We'll answer a few basic car guy questions, including engine displacement, number of cylinders, camshaft type, fuel pump type, idle RPM target, rev limit and timing control. With these numbers entered in, the computer and the engine will begin to communicate with each other. It'll come up with the ideal program that's needed. No laptop involved. It's so easy, even I can do it. MSD truly has simplified EFI. Now going a little step further, there is also an advanced calibration option, which allows you to control when the cooling fans come on, first and second, maybe at 160, 180 degrees. Additionally, air fuel targets can be calibrated. You can also play with ignition timing, the pump squirt, the accelerator pump, power valve enrichment, and also nitrous oxide control. But again, because we're just getting it started, we're just gonna go for the initial setup and hit the road. Well, I finished the installation of the MSD Atomic EFI, checked for fuel leaks, and it fired right up. It couldn't have been easier. Eight wires, one hose. Now I'm just gonna put the air cleaner on and take it for a drive. <laughs> 